Wow. Hi, guys, and welcome back to my channel. This is Joyce, and this is Joyce K. Nas Canada content creation channel. And guys, on this channel, I have opened it to, you know, to the entire world for people to come and express themselves, to people, uh, for people to come and educate us on how you can immigrate to other countries. I know you have been seeing people come in and out from different uh, platforms, different countries, and guys, you must have met this great, great, great <laughs> man, <laughs> African man who is doing so well on YouTube and also he's doing very well in the US. He's EBM Scholars. I know most of you have met him. In case you have not met EBM Scholars, you're going to know who he is. I want him to introduce himself and then from there we will flow and, and we'll tell you what is next. EBM, go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joyce, first of all, for inviting me to come to your channel. Yes. Uh, so my name is Ernest Boniface Makuriro, EBM. Uh, EBM is just an abbreviation of my name. Uh, and currently I'm talking from Missouri, United States of America. I've been here in the U.S. for the past 13 years. But I'm originally from Tanzania and I'm currently uh, a naturalized United States citizen here in the United States. Uh, apart from life where you have to work in another organization to get money to live like any other person on the side i do the following things i have been focusing on trying to give more information about how people can migrate from one country to another in a legal way that's number one but number two is not about going to those countries how are you going to succeed in those countries because there are certain things are simple just like telling someone don't drink and drive because in Africa that is common, that can save someone's future yeah. in these Western countries. So mm -hmm. what are the things to avoid? What are the blueprint on immigrants to be able to succeed? Whether we have succeeded or not, but we have gone through certain processes. So our channels are just in that way, making sure that someone comes here to know the purpose of coming here, but to be also to be able to succeed. So that is what I've been able to do. Uh, and the, largely, I'm also talking about the scholarships opportunities. And I usually talk about writing books. And I've been uh, on your tail to make sure that you must write your book, Joyce. I want to see your book. So encouraging people to write their books and be able to sell them on Amazon. The process is free of charge. You don't pay any amount to create your book and post them on Amazon. So those are the major things I've been doing. And I've been doing those kind of things for the 14 years uh, so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, but YouTube recently have been uh, since uh, October 2019. That is when I started becoming serious on YouTube. Prior to that, I was more into the blog and the other things. So that's a little bit about me so far. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, I, I have seen what you have been doing. You have written many books. I've read your books. And I've guys, also so go check his books. Where can people find your books, EBM? Uh, so I divided, first of all, people should know. Mm. For me, I'm writing books not to get money. Money will come later. I know that. Because I'm mm. planning to write 100 books. Yes. So now I'm number 11. Yes. Next weekend, I'm releasing a new book, mm. uh, which is about Green Card Lottery. The book will be coming next week. Yes. So where do you, people get the, the books? Mostly will be on Amazon. Mm. Uh, so if you go and write Ernest Makurilo or Ernest Boniface Makurilo, you'll be able to get my books. But there are certain books are free. But on Amazon, there is no way you can get a free book, no matter what you want to, to, to be doing in a charity. So there are other websites. I've I mean, I managed to upload this book because we'll be talking about scholarships. So this book is called Schol uh, PhD Scholarships for Africans in the United States. Don't, just forget about the word United States and forget the word PhD. So the principles which are here, even if you are applying for masters in Europe or Canada, you'll be able to get them. The principles will be the same. There are only a few things specific for U.S. which are here. So, for instance, this book, which has 498 pages, is a free download PDF online. So, if someone goes to the ebmscholarships.com, the second uh, post is a free book. If you go there, there is a link on how you can be able to download uh, this book and you can be able to get it for free. So there are, for those who are in Tanzania, because there is one person has app, but I don't know other people in other countries you cannot be able to use. I don't know, in Kenya you might, because you need to have M-Pesa, but when you go to download, 
there is is it free you don't pay anything i've never asked any person from kenya to test it so the there is app for Tanzanians they use is called SIM SIM Gazette. Not SIM with you, it's just like a SIM card. SIM Gazette. In that way, there is magazines or newspapers and books. So, in the aspect of books, if you write Ernest Makulu, there are all my books are there. So, I have three books on scholarships, all of those are free. I don't want people to come with unnecessary excuse why I didn't get a scholarship, is because I didn't know where to get them. So, scholarship books are for free. Wow, rest, you can be able, and even their money is just like four dollar, five dollar, whatever. So it's not about. I'm not at the moment into. Let me charge, get more money. All these kind of things, no. That is passion for you. Yeah, down the road, the money will come when I mm. have, when I'm I'm in the sixty five book, whatever. That time mm. I'll be maybe I'll be getting the Nobel Prize of writing books. I don't know. Mm. Or when I'm dead, people will be able. This guy got a lot of things. Then my you're not going to die. By the time we die, Jesus will have come for the church. So EBM, exactly. tell us who is EBM on social platforms. Okay, so uh we have two persona I can simply say there is mm. myself, like Ernest, <laughs> on the side, and then there is EBM on the camera. So mm. on the social platform, uh most of the things I'm doing on social platform are part of my lifestyle. Uh, so it's just like someone who is trying to show the things which myself have been able to do and to make it easier for others. That is the biggest part on social media. I'm giving an example. Uh, I came to the United States through scholarships. I know people are looking for scholarships. So my job is not to apply for you, it's to give the guidance that this is possible and this is how you can be able to do. On the social media, I'm not there to post that, oh, I, you see, I'm now in America, you see the nice area. I don't care about that. The level of maturity is higher. I cannot be, be part of using me being in America to make someone feel bad. But how can I help you if you're in Kenya, if you're in Tanzania, even in your area, how can you succeed? How can you go to another country to become... A expat expatriate to work with the United Nations, being international or officer, even within Africa or to other countries, because I know the processes and I've done that, or I have I've helped people to do that, to do to do those such kind of things. So for me, in social media is more educational way on how you can be able to move from one point to another, and I don't I don't use the social platforms. Uh, just to go there to create a platform, maybe to become a politician or just to feel better. Oh, because I've done one, two, three, three, four. For instance, if I post something, it has to have intention of education. For instance, I made a video about, oh, I got iPhone 13 Pro Max. But the point was not just, oh, I have iPhone 13 Pro Max. Just, oh, it's just great things. Just to make you feel better about you because you have techno, no. The purpose of the video was how iPhone 13 Pro Max is a revolutionary for YouTubers. You don't need it nowadays to use a bigger camera. You can use your phone and do everything. So for me, it's just more about education. Because after all, the phone we're getting is for loan. It's not I paid all those money. So the point is just how are you using anything you do to make sure that it has impact, yeah, positive impact to others. Wow. So you are you are on which platforms? Uh, you are on YouTube. So I'm on YouTube, which I'm now focused more on YouTube. And YouTube will have two accounts. I have uh, EBM Scholars, which is the English account, and I have Swahili account, which is called EBM Swahili. Those are two accounts. But uh, on the other account, which I'm also very active, is on Instagram. I have two accounts on Instagram. EBM Scholars is one account, and EBM Signature. Is another account so those are two accounts okay. then uh on facebook i have two i mean apart from my personal account but on mm -hmm. facebook i have created what we call the facebook page so it's called uh ebm scholars official and also uh is a facebook group is called green card information group so it's a facebook group on that way but also i'm also having the what to call podcasts. I haven't been very active on podcasts yet, but I have podcasts, one for English, one for Swahili. EBM Scholars is a podcast English. EBM Swahili is a Swahili podcast. So those are the bigger areas I am. 
I opened TikTok. I made one video. It's not good for me. It's just few one minute. So I'm not in TikTok like really. But most likely is just YouTube is the future for me. Uh, I have I'm Twitter account, but not very much. And I'm encouraging a lot of people to be on YouTube because YouTube now is taking over TV. YouTube is taking over everything and YouTube is income. You can be able to succeed yourself. You know how YouTube it is. So yes. if you ask him right now, what is your ultimate goal in your, yeah, from everything, is to become a full-time YouTuber, to quit my job and do YouTube full-time. That's the goal. That's what I'm explaining. There is a book coming out, which is say the YouTube blueprint, uh, ultimate guide to start YouTube channel and Excel, make it as uh, just like overall, just as income and the profession, as a career, especially for Africans, because it doesn't make sense. Someone is finishing, uh, you studied for 17 years until bachelor degree, you are waiting for five years to get a job of 300 US dollars per month. Why can't you start your YouTube while you were in high school? Until you finish your university, how many videos do you have? So we want to see Africans, they, you are a teacher, start teaching online while you are still a teacher. You are IT person, start doing uh, freelance jobs online and also do teach others on YouTube. So that means YouTube can become a platform just as any other career. Not like I have to finish my degree so that I can get a job of $300. I can just, yes, I can finish this one. I can become my own youtuber and have everything so that is just to provide new awareness of youtube as a career and you have to be example myself to quit everything in face on youtube but that doesn't come in within a day you have to have a plan for years on consistency so probably my goal is 2026 january 1st to quit everything and focus only on youtube if everything goes as a plan wow interesting so EBM, we are so excited to have you here. I have been watching your videos. I have known you for quite a while. Actually, guys, EBM is one of my mentors. When I was starting my YouTube, he held my hand. And this far, I've always gone back to him and asking him, well, how do I do this? And he's always there to help me. And today we are going to learn so much from him and especially scholarships, about scholarships and how to come and study abroad. So tell us, what are the opportunities available for people who are interested to come and study in the U.S.? I know you're in the U.S., so yeah. what are the, the pathways for coming to study in the U.S.? Okay. That is a good start. Uh, even though I live in the U.S., I have focused the uh, scholarship opportunities, yes, for the U.S., Canada, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand, just like the first world countries. That is the area of focus. Uh, when someone wants to go to study, there are two ways. You can go as what we call self-financing students, or you can go as scholarship student. Yeah. Self-financing, that means you are paying tuition and the fees on your own. It means when you get admission, you have to show bank statement. When you show bank statement, the university will give you admission letter and it will give you the what you call I-20 to be able to get the visa. And the embassy will ask you, where do you get the money? They will question so much things. But if you go as, self, uh, you go as a scholarship student, you don't need bank statement because your admission has amount of money you are going to be given. For instance, on my case, I was going to the scholar, I mean, to the interview I had two letters, one with a scholarship of 36,000 US dollar and another one with 24,000 US dollar. So I had two scholarships of 60,000. So I don't need to have any bank statement that who will pay for your education, who will give cover cost of, cost of living is already the school will be able to cover that and with the scholarships, which I'm going to show. So you, there are two ways. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit quicker on the aspect of self-financing, which I don't advise for many people, unless otherwise you are, you don't have the qualifications and you have money. But I don't advise you to pay 40, 30,000 US dollars just to come to US to study bachelor degree of something you can study in your own country. For cheaper, obviously. So, 
if you want to come to the United States, let me start with that, or to go to any country, you want to go for uh, to pay for school fees, it's so expensive. Yesterday we were having a meeting with you and uh, we talked about international students are paying different rates in Canada. That's not in Canada. So in US, is this way. Even if you are a US citizen, going from one state to another state, you get punished for that. You pay more. Whether you're a green card holder, whether you're a US citizen, you get more punishment. So the tuition fees are divided into following. There is a called instant fee. I live in Missouri. If I study at a university in Missouri, maybe tuition and fees will be 5000 per year. If you come from California, you come to Missouri, you're outsider from Missouri. You are not official here. So even if you are a US citizen, you will pay twice than the person who lives here. And then your international student, you pay more than that in most of the university. Some of the university international students in the outside fee, they pay the same, but international students, they pay extra. So that is a lot of money. So they tell you the cheapest university will get just tuition alone and the fees will be around 15,000 per year. That is the cheapest. And then you have to add the cost of living. So I talk about 25,000 to 30,000 US dollar. For what? Just a degree? You can take a bachelor degree in your own country but for master's level and the PhD, there are so many opportunities, so many scholarships all over the world. But for bachelor's degree, don't come and waste your time and the money for that particular case. But if you are the parent or you are a student or you are someone in the middle career, you want to go to study good education for your own money, don't come to America. Don't. For, to pay yourself. Why? Because why should I pay 15,000 or 20,000 tuition fees and then after that I have to pay for living expenses? If you go to Norway, Finland, Denmark, Germany, public universities, no school fees, no tuition fees, zero. What do you mean? There is no. Like if you go to Norway, whether you are, you are a citizen of Norway, you are not a citizen of Norway, even you as a Canadian, go to Norway right now, get admission to any public university, you don't pay anything, you'll pay living expenses, your own living expenses, not tuition to the school. It's zero. Are you saying that a Kenyan is who has whether you're Kenyan, you don't a Tanzanian, whatever, is it zero? What do you mean? How? <laughs> Welcome to Norway, my friend. <laughs> How do they even cater for that? Because I know, like, coming to study in Canada, an international student pays five or six times more than a local student. I have even a video. Norway, that's why my, if you ask me, yes, my dream was to come to U.S., but before coming to U.S., I knew U.S. was very difficult. I plan to go to Norway first. It's my first country, then to come to U.S. What is the quality of education now that they're offering? Oh, man. It's top notch. Is 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 in Norway? Is Finland? Is Denmark? The population is five million. Six million population is the best education you'll ever get. What is the requirement? So, I'll come to that. <laughs> so uh, let me give us, let me give you an experience about it. <laughs> I know that, you get that one should be something else now. Okay, <laughs> that is that that one we are going to serve it hot at the end. Let yeah. us now know how can people come to study in the U.S. Uh, under scholarship. Yeah. So self-financing is very discussed. If you want to study for paying, go to Norway, Finland, Norway, wherever those countries is, Scandinavian plus German is a free education. You pay living expense, which about 10,000, 12,000, you'll be able to survive. But don't pay on your own. So then it comes to scholarships. What are scholarships? Because some people, they do not know. People confuse scholarships and work permit to work as international student on campus. Working on campus while you are studying, like the normal work, like you are going to find a job, that is not a scholarship. So when you say scholarship, it means they give you the money, you don't pay back, different from the loan. So in the US, or all over the world, the scholarships have been divided into uh, they might have different names, first of all. They might call it scholarship, fellowship, assistantship. But in the end, you get money. Uh, for graduates in U.S., 
they have what they prefer they call assistantship. You are assisting certain duties in the department, whether teaching, uh, being seminar supervisor, seminar leaders, or tutorial assistant, whatever. That's why they prefer more graduate in the US. I'll talk about that. But to get them, very rarely you can be able to get scholarships for bachelor's degree. Why? Bachelor's degree in the US is four years. Master's is two years or one year. So if the aim is to help Africans or Asians or any person from developing countries, why should I bring one person to study four years while I can bring two people? Uh oh, sorry. It's okay. Sorry. Uh, there is a phone who's coming and I'm using the same. <laughs> yes, we understand. <laughs> what was calling me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I will get back into her. So why should you study the four-year program mm. for one person while they can bring two people for graduate masters and they'll be, they'll be doing it for four years? So they'll prefer masters. And the masters or PhD, they'll be able to come and teach or help the department than mm. the people who are coming just as bachelor degree, which... They do not know anything. Basically, they're coming to study what is the physics and they mm. study about basic mathematics. So they prefer graduate. So there is only one college in the US, which I know, has a guarantee of 100% scholarships for bachelor's degree. It's called the Berea College. B-E-R-E-A. Berea College. I have a video about Berea College. It's the only college in the United States doesn't have school fees. Doesn't have tuition. How many students do they take from Africa? So for international students, they have more, but international students, they take 30 students each year. Those are out very few. Of, out of over 300 applicants each year. Millions. No, they get, three, they told me international students alone, they get, they get, it was three, four years ago. They say they get at least 300, 500 max. 300. So it's a very tough competition still. So, so out of 300,000, they only take 30 students. No, 300, just 300. Not 300,000, just 300, 200, 300, just, yeah. For international so out students. of 300 applicants, they only take for international, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. The rest are Americans for bachelor's degree. So mm. if you get admission to that university, Oh, mm. that college, you are guaranteed 100% to be given fully scholarships. Mm. And the application, application is free of charge. There is no application fee. Deadline is November 30th. But you must take the test, like either TOEFL exam or IELTS exam, or the English proficiency, or you take ACT exam, or the Olingo exam, or you have to take the... ACT exam. You have to take a certain exam. There is no exception. Don't bring, oh, I know English. No, you do not know English. You don't dream in English. So you have to take that exam, and if you apply, you get that. So apart from very few scholarships which are available, even for some other universities, for bachelor's degree international, majority of the scholarships are master's and PhD. So these are the guidelines overall, regardless. In order to get master's or PhD in the U.S., Obviously, you need to have a very good GPA. Results. They have to be very good. Upper second class and above. But if you have lower second class, it, you need it to have not too very, very bad, like C minus, and you, you hope you get a scholarship. Let's be serious. It has to be competitive GPA. That's number one. Number two, you need it to have a very good work experience. By work experience, whether it's free volunteering programs, whether it is internship, whether it is paid, they don't care as long as you have good work experience. That is another part. And by work experience, that means to write a very good resume. Not the resume about date of birth, marital status, uh, religion, tribe. We are not looking for the tribal chief here in America. We are looking for someone who can come here and bring changes in this planet Earth. And then there is the aspect of doing exams. So Regardless of whether you study the Bachelor of Linguistics, whatever it is, there is a requirement for international students. If you are not from England, Australia, whatever, you are not your grandmother, whatever, is, I mean, you are not from the native speak of English, you must take the English test. I know there are some of the universities allow 
to have what we call the uh, what we call the exemption. But don't wait for the exemption. You are going to compete compete to the fullest. So you have to take the English proficiency test. Uh, then, apart from that, uh, which is about two hundred and twenty for GRI uh, for TOEFL, if you take the British version International English Language Testing System, is about three hundred nearby 400 US dollar, 350 around that, around that amount. So it's a lot, but you have to invest. And then you have to take the graduate exam. So this graduate exam, it doesn't matter whether you're American, whether you're international. Yes, with the COVID, some universities, they, they, they can give you a waiver, whatever, but don't settle for the waiver. Don't wait for the sympathy. While you're waiting for the sympathy, someone in China did that exam. So depending on the program, so I have some of the books here I want to show you. So for those who are applying for management, whether it's master's or PhD, they have to take this GMAT exam, graduate management admission test, GMAT exam. For those who are taking the law exam, I mean, they want to become lawyers, they have to take the LSAT exam. For those who are taking non-management programs, graduate record exam, GRIE, you have to take this exam. So you have to take one exam to be able to be qualified. So, yes, I understand in this exam there are mathematics, there are so many things complicated, but if you don't take the exam, your application is incomplete. That's the problem for America. And in addition to that, there is application fee for every university you are applying. US and Canada yeah. application fee. In, no, Europe, in Canada, when you're applying, like in Ontario, uh, they have a centralized way of, of doing the application so that you can only pay a hundred. Yeah. to cater so, for five colleges. Yeah. But here, each university, they have their own fee. In oh, Europe, there's no application fee it. at all. Europe, there's no application fee. No application fee. And again, in the US, when you take this exam, the GRIE, or you take the uh, TOEFL exam, you don't send the results yourself. The results must be sent by Education Testing Service, ETS, the owners of the test. To send the TOEFL exam is $17, one copy of the results. To send the GRIE exam is $27. Hmm. So it's no joke if you want to come to America for hmm. education. You have to go through those processes. Then you have to get good recommendation letters. Then you have to write a good statement of purpose or motivational statement. Why should they give you scholarship? Not I'm often. Not, oh, you know, I, it's my dream to come to America. If I'm telling the truth of everything, this is the point you are going to be denied. Explain your education background and your work experience. Your background, what are, what are you lacking right now? You think that if you come to take this particular program, it will help you. When you go back, you can be able to bring positive change in your respective community. That's number one. But also, when you come here, how are we going to benefit ourselves as a department or the university or the community at California if you are going to be at that university? Because they are not wasting their time to give you 60,000 US dollars to come to America and you don't have any impact here. They will take yeah. that 60,000 and pay 60 students 1,000 each to study in Tanzania or Kenya or Uganda. But they bring you one here. They believe that they can also benefit from you being here. So you have to indicate all those kind of things in your application. That, okay, my background, for instance, I studied political science. Why I studied political science and all these kind of things is because I grew up in a region where there was refugees in 1994, 1995, back in the day. So you can explain that, not for the matter of being fully sympathy about what happened with the people in Burundi and Rwanda and the refugees back then, growing up in the refugee hosting community, it brought me to looking for causes which are related to humanitarian, causes which are related to the rights, causes, causes which are related to uh, peace building, all those kind of things. So that was my dream, and my plan was to start to work with the United Nations, all those kind of things. Then I took initiatives to start volunteering. I did the internship with the UNCR in Tanzania. Then I went to study political science. Then I've been volunteering, teaching civic education, doing blah, 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 blah. And then when you come to apply, they go, oh, this person, what he's doing? He didn't take the advice by being from that poor area. He wants just, no. Then when I come here, I'll, what am I going to bring to my colleagues, my classmates? One, two, three, four, all those kind of things. So... You need to, whether it's your, you have to be like a politician, 
be like root oh, 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 oh baba in, 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 in. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you know I didn't know you know this. Mm. If you're, going to, you're not going to accomplish. Once you get the scholarship, other things will follow later. If Once you... I get this scholarship, I will come and and bring my cultural what 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 to yes to this to the international students coming from other countries. I will also be exposing other classmates to the how to do research, how to focus, how to bring changes in this world. I will invite them to my organization, even if you don't have organization. Mm. <laughs> wow. Not to be a typical politician. But so all of those, so they are going to look in America, what do they look? Even in Canada, even in Europe. Europe, they are very strict on certain things, but in America, they look what they call the whole person perspective. The same way as Canada. Yes, your GPA is not upper second per se, it's a little bit lower. And someone with the first class, but the person with the first class after finishing bachelor degree hasn't worked for three years, is just waiting for, for employment. The person with the lower second took initiative to go to volunteer at orphanage center, and every week is going to teach the community college or whatever community on something. This person can, if he says he's going to bring changes, is going to bring changes. If I tell people, my goal is to, even if yes, YouTube pays me, whatever, but if I say my goal is to help people. Yeah, I, I, I wrote the book. I posted, write to yourself and put it for free. So I have proof. So if you have done something for free, it helps okay. you a lot. Okay. Volunteering. Apart from, yes, you have a good work experience, but mm. you work because you get paid. How yeah. can you prove that I'm going to bring changes to my community? What Tell us you what you have done. Tell us yes. what you have done. What have you done or what mm. are you doing? In your community. Do you yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So all those kind of things, they're going to look for you like, okay, this person doesn't have a good GPA, but has volunteered during the time of the COVID on doing one, two, three, four. Uh, but again, this person every Saturday is going to clean the environment. This person, uh, apart from this one, usually is doing this way. You see? So by doing all those kind of things, they believe on you. I can give you an example. There was one prime minister of Tanzania, Fred Kisumai, was a prime minister for 10 years. He had the, I think, advanced diploma, not a degree, full, but we call it equivalent to degree, which is in agriculture or something, which I don't think he had very good results, but um, that's none of the point. But when he finished as a prime minister, at one point he said, I want to go to study. Was a prime minister for 10 years. He applied at Harvard. He was given scholarship to go to Harvard because he has 10 years as a prime minister. That is the biggest experience you can ever have. So even if that's what I'm saying, like I'll give you an example. Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo don't have high school. But if Ronaldo applies to Stanford to go to study PhD in sports and business, you, you need Ronaldo. That's why Alex Ferguson, even if he doesn't have master's or PhD, was given a chance to teach at Yale and Harvard. So it's not about what have you done? Usain Bolt, if even if I don't know if he has more than high school, if he wants to teach about his sports, running athletic department, any university if he's applying, he's the best runner on the planet Earth. With oh, so the point is, what have you done? Forget about oh, I have first class. Yes, it's good, but it's not everything. What have you done? Those are the things, especially when you're going to the Western world. They are looking about those. It's not about the job description, work experience. My responsibilities were one, two, three, four. Yes, those are your responsibilities because they paid you the salary. What have you done out of those responsibilities? Yes, my responsibility is a teacher. I was I managed to teach students and to make sure them, apart from these hours, not to get into the trouble or using drugs or using this one. So for that particular case, I was I was able to save this number of students to be able to accomplish. So it, it, it has to be research oriented what have you done and we have a problem especially people from africa and asia and even latin america we are more into community thinking that i'm giving example if i ask are you the best i know um you know we are a team whatever but westerners they are okay to express as individual how great they are that's why if you ask Lionel Messi, are you the best player on the planet? Say, I'm not. Ask Ronaldo, yeah, I'm the best because I have, I'm the top goal scorer of all the planet Earth. I have this number of goals. I have this Confidence. Confidence, yes. So, so at this point, it's okay 
to be proud of yourself, not to to to, to be like competing, like no, but with intention, like I've done this one, which you have done. But if we were waiting for them to see, oh, what what I meant, or as a group we did one, two, three, okay, just stay there. They will take some guy from Portugal wow. or another wow. from Uzbekistan yes. who is going to be competitive. So those are the things which will make you get scholarships wow. in wow. America wow. or even wow. in Canada. Mm. It's just be competitive at every mm. see. For me, I usually tell people last point I want to mention to finish on this part is mm. scholarship is like being in the war. Mm. You have two options. Kill someone or to be killed. That's there's no uh, there's nothing in between. You want a scholarship, you want to get it, go fully apply competitive. Make sure that you check your grammar. There is grammar.com. Make sure you know the language of that particular country. What I mean, language, what do you say? Oh, I, I did the field attachment. They do not notice the field attachment in the US. What is the field attachment? What is the attachment? Are you attached to what? Say I did the internship. You have to find these terminologies, whatever. So one terminology can make one person get the scholarship, another one not. Just go and learn how to write a resume in the countries where you are going. Because if you write the, you are, oh, I worked at uh, KCCB, whatever, what is that? They do not know what is that. You have to know when you write the words, write the full name with abbreviation and put in the bracket. So there are so many, so many things you have to eliminate any unnecessary errors. That's why we are people like you or I are here making sure that we break down to you so that you avoid unnecessary mistakes, which can exactly. cause to be given yep. the scholarship. Wow. Visa. Wow. Wow. EBM, that is so awesome. I mean, we are so grateful that you're teaching us all these things. And I hope, guys, you're going to check EBM Scholars on his channel. Please follow him, subscribe to his channel. And, and that is the only way we can help you guys share this video to all the people that you know. And we really, really appreciate. Yeah, so EBM, welcome. Uh, let us know how people can immigrate, uh, how people... And um, apply scholarships, and which are these scholarships which are available? List, give us at least ten or twenty of them, and then we can start applying immediately. Immediately, and list of the scholarships. Right now, mm -hmm. until November third, there is something called a Chevening Scholarship. Right now, Chevening Scholarship is the biggest scholarship in the United Kingdom, and the best part of this Chevening is masters alone. You don't need to have recommendation letters right now. So don't have excuses. Oh, I was delayed. No. They don't need the English proficiency test at all because of the COVID. Because all British council centers, they don't offer English tests, so they cannot request them. But even if they request, it will be after getting the scholarship in June 20, whatever, before you go to start university. That's what they need. So at the time of application, until they make the decision to go to the interview, they don't need those ones. So, Chevening Scholarship. So, if you go to chevening.org, you can be able to apply. So, it's just a simple. You put your profile, your name, date of birth, whatever, those information. Put your work experience. And there are four S's. Connect about uh, leadership. Why, when you come back, what are you going to do? That's something you've been talking about. You are going to do those. So there are four short S's. Short, I mean, maximum is 400 pages. 400 words. So on my YouTube channel, I made a Swahili video and English video, apart from explaining about chevening, but I wanted to show a screen recording, every single from opening, from writing your name or the email, all the essays I've explained in Swahili or if you want in English, in detail. So those are, that's number one, you can go there, apply before, uh, before November 2nd, midnight. Yeah, so that's number one. Right now, we are talking, uh, there is a scholarship, uh, it's called, there is one MBA scholarship in Netherlands. Uh, I forgot the exactly the name, but I'll send you the link. People can be able to apply. I'll make the video for that. Uh, right now, we are talking almost every university in America which has scholarships is there. What I mean, what is, is, which has a scholarship? For instance, if you go download this book, this book, apart from having all the information, uh, so it has uh, the each university, each program, so I put it maybe microbiology or anthropology, political science, international relations, mathematics. So I put all the universities with scholarships, full funded. So for instance, like this one, 
is I'm giving I want just to 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 read uh, this one for PhD just examples. University of Minnesota. All students admitted to the PhD program are offered a five-year funding package, contingent with a contingent on a satisfactory progress toward degree. The funding package provides payment of tuition up to fourteen credits per, per that one, and also the funding is going to offer the everything. So every university you want in America, for instance, they're here. Fully funded programs on my. Uh, Biomedical or by medical, so every so if you download here, there is all the university, for instance, in the US. But let's say you want to go to uh to England, apart from Chevening, there is uh other scholarships which are given by a specific university. There are scholarships like uh, what 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 is it called? This one, uh. Th those countries which are colonized by British, what, what do they? What do we call them? The well, the one queen is the leader, or whatever. What do we call? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, not uh, not Uncle Fon. There is association. I forgot, uh, and uh, I feel terrible myself. But there are those scholarships. If you go to Canada, there are scholarships which are given by the government specific for international students and then the bigger universities of canada toronto university of toronto wherever those bigger ones they have funding specifically for that one uh on my, one of my videos posted the link i can just go and take those one and i will send to you you can be able to post on this video people can be able to see them so there are all those kind of scholarships specific either by the university or by that one uh so as long as and the other way don't apply to any program which they haven't said they are giving money. Because if you apply, they didn't say they are going to give money for international students. It means you are applying, agreeing that you are going to be self-financing. So don't apply. Let's get admission then find the money. No. The admission and the scholarship must be tied together. You have to apply that once you, like, all admitted. If you go to, for instance, you, uh, Let's say university, for instance, like Notre Dame, the biggest university in among the biggest universities are in the US. So, for instance, if you apply masters in peace and justice studies or PhD in peace studies, it is written all admitted students in this program guarantee a hundred percent scholarship. So, your job is to apply and to get uh, uh, to get is admission. that one still available now? Deadline is December, December 15. That is the deadline, December, yeah, to study what. Uh, anthropology and peace studies, religion and peace. So, uh, for all, so there are four programs: anthropology, political science, uh, religion, and something related to the peace studies. Those were there. If someone applies for to masters, masters and PhD. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. If someone applies masters or PhD, uh, George Mason University, Conflict Resolution. All students, you get admission there. Guarantee you get a full scholarship. So you're going to share with us the links of those. I'll, I'll send you. I'll just go and quickly get some of these links and send to you. So there are so many. Someone who wants to study mathematics, if you apply at Stanford, you get admission. Stanford for mathematics, masters or PhD, you get a full funding. So th they are there, but the point is, don't you go. I'm going there. Have you done the GRE? Oh. Have you done the English proficient test? So that's why I'm usually, I usually, that's why I sometimes I'm, I usually tell people like you have to prepare yourself. Yes, there are few few programs that can give you waiver of those, but in order to compete, don't look for the sympathy. Prepare yourself. That's why you should tell. That's why like when uh, like Chevening doesn't need that one. We know for sure it doesn't need. So whatever it doesn't need, I pray right away. Right now I'm talking to you. There is what is called Daddy Scholarship D A A D. The biggest scholarship to German. You need to have two years of work experience. If you apply, you get it, you go to German. My two brothers and my sister studied PhD in Germany through DAD, DAAD, we call Daddy Scholarship. After they studies, then they settled there. For them, they are professors in Tanzania, yeah. They don't like to live overseas. So, hmm. the scholarship are there, but get prepared. That's why I usually, like... Uh, let me start with like all the time. The first 
if you start the first chapter, the page number one says as follows, if I may read for you. Scholarship application is not a therapy session. Don't express your poverty and the personal problems seeking for the sympathy and the mercy. Ernest Bonfess Makurilo. That's how you started the book. It's a war. Wow. You are not going there. You are not going there just to ask. If they want this, they want it, uh, better to do the English proficiency test and have small, poor results than not doing. Because you haven't done, your application is incomplete. Mm. That's how it is. So that is the quicker way on how I can help people is to make sure that you prepare yourself. That's why you should tell people, if you're applying for scholarship, when do you want to go to study? Remember, international students, if you are applying today, you are applying today to go to study next year. Yes. Next year, September. Yes. So that means if you apply, for instance, right now we are talking to you, is in October 2020, 2021, you are applying for September 2022. It means from now to September, or August, September next year, 2022 is one year. So if you don't get it, you have to apply 2022 to go 2023 in September. You are losing two years. So to avoid that, you have to do the following. Take the test required. If you want, I mean, the GRI is only in the US. In Europe, there's no GRE. It's just the English test. In Europe, there's no application fee. So it's just you take one, you just and you apply. Then apply over. Apply over 20 universities. There is no way you are a soccer player, you take 20 penalties and you lose all 20 penalties. There is no way. But if you apply two universities, who are you? <laughs> who Do you are know you? how many people are applying in the world? What? Yes. There is a, someone in China, 1.4 billion people in China, they want to move. Chinese, if he's going to Tanzania or Kenya, is the thing that is in the US. Now, the people who are having higher scores in the world for English proficiency tests and GRI and GMAT are Chinese and Indians. They study, they want to get out of that population. There are so many here. Yeah, and they're very smart. So why are you playing around? Oh, you know, my life, because just you eat chapati, you think that life is easy? <laughs> yeah, so prepare yourself. I know what you are saying, Ibn. You have to prepare. You have to take the whatever is, is required and apply as many universities as possible. Let me yeah. give an example. When I applied for my master's, I was not ready to lose. I applied 25 universities mm. or 25 scholarships. I got three. So average in every eight applications, I got one. So if I ended applying three, I could get zero. Yeah, see, exactly. So I applied for PhD. The more, apply, the more the merrier. I applied for PhD even if I didn't go later. I applied mm -hmm. 15 universities. I got two. So in seven and a half, I got one. So my principle is simple. I apply minimum 20. And is Europe, is it free? What are you worrying? Apply 50. And see if you'll get you. But if so, oh, I applied universities. I didn't get a scholarship. I asked you, I also asked the following question Have you taken the English proficiency test? No. Then you didn't apply. Unless otherwise they say we give exemption like on the. Can people have to do TOEFL. Can people do IELTS? Because yes. I know in Canada yes. it's IELTS. No, it's either of the two. Yeah, I mean, that in Canada, if you are going for specifically like express entry, they prefer IELTS, uh, uh, international English language, because it's a British system, which is Canadian system, the same. But if for, st for studying all universities, they give alternative. You choose the TOEFL or IELTS. But the IELTS is the simple one for many Africans because it's a British English. And, and it can serve both USA and Canada. Yeah, all, all. If you take the LTC, you know. and the other way is that one, if you get a 6 or 6.5 and above, almost every university in the world they will accept. But the 12, each university or each department, they can have their own score. So you can get a 75 out of 120. Some for they tell you we want 85. If you go to Harvard, they want 110. So, yeah. but if you take the, the, the British version, it has a good, if you get this the minimum, you passed for any university. 6.5 and above, you'll be in a good hands. So, don't wait for the sympathy. 
prepare yourself and apply as many. If you say, you up, how many apply? Three. Say, yeah, that's why you didn't get it. But if you want to get it, you have to apply as many opportunities as possible. Hmm. Oh. So uh, for now, we have the, you're going to share with us the list of the scholarships that are available. And then for how to apply, you need to go to EBM Scholars YouTube channel and watch his videos, see how to write that statement, uh, see also how to write. Do they need to write a cover letter or it's just no. a statement? Statement, motivational statement or statement of motivational purpose. Motivational statement. And uh, yeah. OK, yeah. they need to come and see that. And then from there, EBM, how about you uh, helping people to apply uh, at a cost? Uh, helping people to apply with a cost is something I thought at one point, and I planned to start it. But I came to realize that it would be a terrible mistake if I'll be dealing with people from Africa. <laughs> because this is because the I think that once they have paid you, now it's a must for them to get. That's the problem. It's just like, but if they go to a lawyer, it's not a must to win your case. So the contract, I designed with the contract that I'm going to apply you yourself. You have to take the English proficiency test. If you want to apply in America, you have to take the GRIE. You have to get this is course. So I'll give you my own requirements. Yes, somebody does not me. pass. If, do, if you then don't pass, I'm going to apply for 15 universities. And I'm going to write the statement of purpose. I'm going to write this one. That was the plan. But in the end, if someone doesn't get, no matter what, they will have that this person maybe rushed the job or didn't apply properly. So I'll come to, uh, and down the road, I'll be considered the one among the scammers. Yeah. So, to avoid that, I said, what I'll be able to do is to give you a guidance. I'm not writing for you. I'm not applying for you. I will do that service for people who are in America. They can understand if you come to me, I'm a consultant. So I'll open the company to deal with people here. Just in the same way, I avoid it to help people to apply for green card lottery because I can help you to apply. But I've seen people, whether intentional or not intentional, when they don't win, they expectations. The that, is the EBM, that is the same reason I have. I'm hesitant to start an immigration agency because when somebody pays me, they expect that they have to come to Canada. And you That's know, it's not guarantee. And you have already paid me. I don't want to live with that guilty. Personally, I don't want to live with the guilty that you didn't come and you paid me and I spent your money. And I had the right to spend your money because it's, I mean, I have done work for you. So instead of all that trouble, let me just share free information and move on. Exactly. So that's the only thing I will, I'll say, I'll be consultant in US based system. Like you are you are high school, you want to get a scholarship, you are either you are immigrant or you are a US citizen, these are the steps. Whatever I can I can now if someone write an essay, can you look this essay for me? I've been able to help you. Oh, remove this, remove this, remove this. I can help you with those ones. But for you, for me, starting like applying for you, filling the form, I don't know mm -hmm. about that kind of craziness down the road. Uh like, oh, I didn't go because that guy is a scam, whatever. So yeah, and someone what so hard to get that money. You charge you maybe a hundred dollars and someone doesn't get it, you'll be in so much trouble. So the easy way, go to my YouTube, go there. You want to uh, send me the purpose, go and get my book. I'm done. So if, if you want, if you want EBM to help you, you have to know that he's not guarantee and, and, and I mean yeah. it has to be in a contract signed that you don't have to build grudges. And you have to be very special for him to apply for you because I'm thinking you know what you're talking about and, and some people don't really get it. And so. the, the other problem is, mm. I, I don't know what they call much, no. People have been <coughs> told a lot of things in the street. So they think that they know a lot. So you guide, okay, you have to do one, two. If you, I mean, that exam, I know English. I say, please, you do not know English, trust me. <laughs> trust me. Go try. Go try that. <laughs> <Come on>. try <laughs> trust me. Mm. When you say that you know English, take uh, peanuts and start eating peanuts and talk English at the same time while you are eating peanuts. Just like how you do in Swahili. That's the, one of the level to know that you know English. The native speakers are different. No matter how many hours we speak English, you are not native. That's, That's why language. people they give their millions of money. They want to make sure that you come here, you know English. 
what it, I mean, whether it's, oh, this is disrespectful, they don't care. Is one of the way. If you want to get it, you have to follow the steps. That's what they want. So if on the scholarship, you have to do that. Exactly. So yeah. guys, um, with that, oh, we are coming to the end of uh, this session for the list of the scholarships. Uh, we are going to share with you all the links. Thank you so much for this session. Make sure that you subscribe on EBM Scholars channel because, I mean, you can see how much he has you can see how much information he has shared. And especially the parents. Can you share in all the parents' groups on WhatsApp so that the guys who are finishing yes. their secondary, the people who are graduating after their first undergraduate, they get this information. I know EBM is famous, but I know there are still people that need to know him so that they are going to learn so much. Otherwise, we really, really appreciate. Yeah, so EBM, uh, today I want us to tell us at least how people can go to, to these countries in the in EU to, to study for free. Is this thing for real? A hundred percent. Welcome, welcome, and tell us what how that happens. Okay, so uh education is free. When they say it's free, is from kindergarten to PhD. Uh Norway, Finland, Denmark, whatever those countries is free. Also, most of the universities in German, public universities are also free. So when you apply, but from kindergarten to bachelor degree, most of the education is in their own languages. So if you go to Norway, from kindergarten to bachelor degree is Norwegian. There are very few programs of very few countries, very few universities in those countries which provide uh I mean, English. I mean, in English. And those mm -hmm. courses, I've posted the video with those universities and the nature of them of the courses. So, in fact, maybe there are eight programs or ten programs in total for bachelor's degree. But master's and the PhD is free. So, for Norway in particular, when you get admission, you apply, you get admission at University A, obviously there is no tuition and fees. You have to prove that you have, you, you are able to live in Norway. So, you need to have 12,000 US dollars in the bank account in Norway. They don't want the bank account in Nairobi or Dar es Salaam or Kampala. They want the bank statement from Norway. So either you have a person you know and you have the bank statement from Norway, but most of the time they give you the, uh, they, they give you the uh, bank of the school or the department, you send the money to that particular bank, then they give you the bank statement with your name that is there. So when you go to the to the uh, what uh, you go to the interview, you have admission, you have the bank statement, and obviously you have accommodation already. They created like a place to go to stay. So when and you their visa is expensive, it's five hundred something because it's including the work permit and everything. Uh, so once you arrive in Norway, the first week you are going to open your own bank account, and they will transfer all the money back to your bank account then you can start living. And in Norway, you're allowed to work both on campus and off campus. And it's about 15 to $20, 15 to $18, most of the jobs, you can be able to get it. So if you have, let's say you go there, let's say you have 12,000, but maybe six is from your friend or your relative, you can arrive there, take a six back and you can start at six to start the life while you are working and continue to live while you are there. But that is different from German. Germany, you get up admission, you put the money in the bank, but the account they have in Germany, they call it blocked account. That means when you go to Germany, they are not giving all the money right away after arriving. They will give each month, you pay 12,000, so each month they'll be giving you 1,000 US dollars each month. So if for you borrow from someone... Nice for your use, huh? Yes. So they give the same money for you each month, 1,000. But in Norway, they give all your money back. So if you borrow the money, you know Norway is a better option than German in that particular sense. I prefer the one that they are giving monthly so that I can live on a strict budget. But you're still allowed to work again and see if you can get extra. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, you're allowed to work for 20 hours per week during the school time. So how do people apply for these colleges? So the deadline usually is beginning of no mid of November, I think. 
you apply direct to the university. If they have like the, uh, even if you go direct to a particular university, you want to apply, they will take you to the common like common application for for Norway. So you can apply five universities from the same system, and they have so many programs. And in Norway, if in Norway, Denmark, Finland, uh, Germany, even Netherlands, they have courses just like you can study like masters in algebra specific. Apart from math, masters in mathematics, they can go detail like masters in uh, election and democratization. They can have a specific aspect within the bigger subject. Are they so studying in English? This, this, this course. Masters and PhD, they have so many programs in English. Bachelors is very few programs. But masters and PhD are in English. Are in English. So you are you're also saying that undergraduate is for free. Kindergarten is for free up to PhD. EBM. So if if you want like <laughs> um, many Americans do not know this one. If you want like your child to uh like I mean for me I, I mean yes I don't I have three kids I don't have money like saving for college. I'll take them to Europe. Go and enjoy life in Europe. There, you American can study in order for free. You exactly. need 10,000 to start life. Okay. Instead of wasting your life here with the community colleges and stress, go and enjoy. And everybody will be, well, you are American and you are studying there for free and enjoy life. <laughs> and you will have, and you, our children will have exposure. Yeah. So, wow. Norway, Finland, Denmark, whatever those countries. German free education, yes. Oh my goodness. So guys, you can imagine not getting this information. Someone in the village somewhere in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Africa, in Asia, in, you know, all over the world that we do not know. Me, I didn't know. I didn't know. You know I have had people talk of Germany um, having free courses, but I didn't get it so serious. But now when you talk like this, I'm like, ah, Free education. You know, in Canada, yeah. coming here as an international student, you pay like six times more than my son, than a, a local child. And even yeah. the local children is not so free. It's not so free. Yeah. Like the nurses, we, we pay like 5,000, 8,000 per year for the citizens. So if you're saying that nursing is free in Germany, why Medical not? Medical doctor is free. As long as from kindergarten to PhD is free, regardless of the cause. And the quality of education is super. It's Norway you are talking about. We're talking about Denmark. We're talking about German. German is the biggest economy in Europe. Yes. Number one economy in Europe. So yes. we're not talking about uh, our countries in Sudan in the Tanzania. <laughs> I know. Is how are they able to offer this? Is it that there is no corruption in those countries? Because no. I think our problem in Africa is that there is a lot of corruption, so there is no money even to help even the poor, poorest kids. The problem in Africa is beyond that. I don't want to go too too much in detail, but the problem is bigger than that. Yes. Uh, uh, anyway, and now that we have you, EBM guys, go and check him. And uh, I think he's, he has got the best information. If you want scholarships, if you want to, you know, anything that you want for scholarship to come and study. Uh, last thing, EBM, tell us, between Canada and USA as an international student, because now you have been in this field for quite long, which yeah. one would you prefer? Somebody wants to come and study in Canada and another one in the US. <laughs> That's a very good question. Mm. My number one question would be, what is your end result? Do you want to stay in? You want to stay overseas to have your life after studies? If yes, obviously go to Canada because it will be easier to have more pathways to become a permanent resident in Canada. But if you want to go just to study and to go back to your own country, US is the best option. US has fewer options for you to become permanent resident than Canada. So if I go to study masters in Canada, I know for sure I'll get it. I mean, it's the matter of waiting the time, I'll get the green card, a permanent resident of Canada. But in the US, even if I have PhDs, there is no guarantee. You see the problem where it comes. So if the aim is to go and live there after, obviously, Canada is the best option, not US. That's number one. Number two, people confuse a few things. They confuse into 
yes, US is bigger. Yes, US is great. Yes, is American is just you, all this craziness we have in our head. But in the end, you might struggle a lot to become a permanent resident. Yes, we have opportunity more than Canada when it comes for me. If I have the life is very difficult in state A, I can go to another state because it's 50 countries joined together to form US. So I can go to anywhere I can do that kind of things. But yes, in Canada, yes, you have prophecies like eight, 12 prophecies. You can move to another province, but it's different. In the US, you have more in that particular way. For instance, California yes. alone has population more than Canada. So you can move from wherever, but in the end, like as a transitional wise to permanent residence, Canada has a lot to offer than the US for international students. But if you want to just, I want to go to study there, just get like the uh, volunteering, blah, 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 blah. Then you go back to my country, always come to us yeah yeah well okay yeah uh, because i know in canada there are even some programs occupations in demand that you could be in 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 university as an international student and start your process for pr maybe after studying for one year they allow you that you can apply because they realize this person even when they're going to school they can be a workforce even as they continue with their studies yeah. Yeah, wow. So, guys, it's up to you to make choices. This video is going to be here. Make sure that you share. I'm going to share EBM links so that you can check him on his channel. Go subscribe. Go check him out. Go check his books. He's also going to share with us his books. I know his kids and his wife, they're also on YouTube channel. I'm going to share their, their links here. You need to go and see how the wife is doing on her YouTube channel so that we support him in all that he's doing. Uh, last word, Ibn, before you go. Uh, for me, I usually appreciate what you are doing, but at the same time, no matter what, keep doing what you are doing. And for the people, uh, we have to change our behaviors when uh, we get good information to share with others. We are very good into sharing about videos about COMED on WhatsApp groups. We are very good into sharing the information about sports, entertainments, Forward, yo, today, uh, Damon done one, two, three, four, is sharing all the groups. Tomorrow, Eric Omondi has done all this way, it's just all over the every. But when there is a scholarship, why is not all over uh, groups? So you have to also to share good information. Even if it doesn't apply to you, you do not know who is looking for that information. Just to share. Just like if you share the joke from Eric Omondi, doesn't mean that everybody will be, it will be funny for that particular person, but you share. You believe that it will be fun. Share information to think that will be useful for another person. So that will be one of the ways on how we can be able to keep sharing the opportunities and see many people are going to utilize these opportunities. Thank you so much, EBM. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming. Anytime I know if we have questions, we are going to follow him on his channel because some of these questions, like the scholarships, I may not know everything, but him, because it's a journey that he has worked he carries this burden to help you guys. So follow him and subscribe to his channel. Thank you guys and bye-bye. Thank you, Joyce.